Hello and welcome to The Download, where we bring you the most current Catholic news and discussion on the topics that matter. I'm Brad Eli. Today we're fortunate to have with us the esteemed Paul Morano <laughs> and the dynamic Christine Niles. Hi, Christine. <laughs> Lots of news to get into today. So much going on in the church and the world, we've had to shift gears and get this all new studio just to cover it. Today, Mother Angelica in the Hall of Fame, a Monsignor sues his diocese, and polygamy decriminalized in Utah. Paul? Mother Angelica is going to the Hall of Fame. It was announced yesterday that on March 5th, she'll be inducted into the Alabama Women's Hall of Fame at Judson College, a Baptist college in central Alabama. Mother Angelica started EWTN in 1981 in a garage in her convent. Her much-loved show, Mother Angelica Tonight, reached millions of people. She also used the show as an opportunity to speak out against the errors of modernism. Monsignor Greg Harrison, an alleged homo predator, is suing the Diocese of Fresno, California. He's suing both the diocese and the diocesan spokesman, Teresa Dominguez, for telling media that last year she uh, believed that one of his alleged victims, saying, I personally expressed my concern for him, told him that I believed him, and apologized for the pain this matter has caused him. I told him that I will support him and be an advocate for him in any way that I can. And polygamy is heading towards decriminalization in Utah. The state Senate voted on Tuesday to reduce the penalties for polygamy to a $750 fine in community service. Previously, it was a felony with up to five years prison time for one offense. It's still a felony in the state to marry more than one spouse without their knowledge or to seek to marry an underage person. The bill's sponsor maintains its purpose is to allow victims of abuse to come forward without fear of imprisonment. You know, back uh, before the passage of gay marriage in the Supreme Court case, uh, critics of it were saying, you know, this is going to lead to the slippery slope of legalizing polygamy no and then pedophilia and all these other things, bestiality, whatever. And supporters of gay marriage were like, oh, that's ridiculous. Stop being, stop no being question. a fear monger. That's absolutely true. That's yeah, what's going I read, on here. I read those things. The court's uh, asking, well, what's this going to stop from having multiple partners? That first story, though, with, uh, with uh, Mother Angelica, if any of you have been tracking church history in America, when she teed off on the bishops in 1993 mm -hmm, after the Denver Youth Rally. Legendary. Yes. And, she, and then after that, she started wearing, you know, okay, a traditional habit. It took a Baptist know, college really. to put her in the limelight now, yeah. really? A Baptist her college? God bless you, Baptists out there. We need you. Oh, yeah. Stay but, strong yeah. in the faith. Yeah, it just shows she, she didn't get any uh, support from the hierarchy of the church. In fact, they tried to take over her network and tell her what to do. Cardinal yeah, Roger Mahoney was enemy number one oh, for yeah. her. Oh yeah, and Weakland for a long and time. Uh, Milwaukee, it was really oh, something. Mother Angelica is EWTN. She still is, her spirit still is EWTN. If you haven't caught her rant, I'm sure you can catch it on our site. Oh, 1993, Mother Angelica rant, Denver Youth Rally, just Google it. But can you, uh, Christine, allegedly discuss the alleged Monsignor, <laughs> alleged Craig Harrison, we, we allegedly have, <laughs> existing in this California, priest, allegedly? This priest is so sue so happy that we have to put the word alleged in front of everything because he, you know, I'm sure he's just waiting to sue Church Militant all reporting. But of course, uh, as a recap, Monsignor Craig Harrison, this is a man who has been accused by multiple alleged victims in multiple dioceses who don't know one another with very similar stories, okay? Harrison has been around, he's like the rock star celebrity priest in the city of Bakersfield in the Diocese of Fresno. He is friends with wealth. He always, he's known to cozy up to the wealthy people. Um, he's, you know, was pastor of the wealthy parish, friends with big money. So anyway, these allegations come out which have dogged him for decades. And three separate um, police departments are actually investigating him for these allegations. All three of them, unfortunately, have, have closed the investigation, but the, the most recent one, Fresno DA, actually came out and said the only reason they're not choosing to prosecute him is because the statute of limitations, because they said investigators did find the allegations credible. Now, just a clarification. They don't mean credi credible in the canonical sense of credible is used against Father Perone, uh, as in just possible. Mm. They mean it in the ordinary Pursuable. sense, which is likely, probable, believable, all of that. And so this got Harrison completely outraged. Um, and now, of course, he's suing the Diocese of Fresno. I'll say it right now as an attorney, he doesn't have a defamation case against Teresa Dominguez. She yeah. got up there and all she said, she didn't say these are true. She said, I believe the, the alleged victim. Right. She's allowed to get up there and express her personal her belief, but she didn't come out and say, yeah. these are definitely true. So he has no case. We also have to put, point out too that Merced DA found the same allegation, exactly. uh, other allegations credible 
in I'm their report. I'm not sure if he actually said the word credible, well, but they did say we're prevented by the statute of limitations. Attorney Paul Jonas said that relates to that they found credible. Right. So, uh, but the he, Bakersfield police is a different story, but that was a complete sham But they come right out and say credible allegations in uh, Fresno. Exactly. So we yeah. have that. And that's not alleged. Yeah, we can exactly. actually say that. We as can a fact. say that. Absolutely. So you know, guys like that, it's 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 amazing. We get uh, what's what's kicking off another whole situation out there is um, Stephen Brady, yeah, Roman God Catholic bless him. faithful. God, God bless, bless you. Him. Uh, allegedly, Stephen Brady allegedly said something that uh, <laughs> Ron Senior Craig Harrison didn't like, and basically reported the facts that these the investigations were going on and, and not taking a stance on it. So he got sued, but he now he's going to threaten a countersuit. Yes. So good for him. He's going to hit because back. these credible because there is credible allegations. Now he's able to say, look, this wasn't just hearsay. This is actual stuff. Yeah. And that's and what we were talking about it. it, so it's yeah, fair game. Absolutely. Back to the uh, Utah decriminalization. Is anybody surprised at that? I mean, that mm, was that was know. inevitable. I mean, like like, like the argument goes, if you know, if, if the sex doesn't matter, why should the number of people matter? Okay, well, that where that train wreck yeah. is going to end was in in, in child, uh, you know, like oh, pedophilia, pedophilia, and normalization of that. Nope. That's where the train wreck is going to end. I don't even know if it's going to end there, but that's definitely well, yeah, that's absolutely. piled yeah, yeah. up right there. All right, well, that's today's headlines recap. We're stepping away now for just 10 seconds. And when we come back, what's the deal with the Jesuits? We'll be right back. Looking to buy or sell a home? With more than 950 faith-based agents that you can trust, turn your dream into reality while supporting the pro-life cause. Visit realestateforlife.org today. Today is the feast of St. Peter Damien, a monk, a cardinal, and a great reformer of the church in the 11th century. Part of his work was to expose and eliminate active clerical homosexuality, which infested the church at that time. But now, it's a big problem again, and the once mighty Jesuits have generally descended into moral degeneracy, and this includes their embrace of homosexuality. With more on that, here's church militant William Mahoney. In the U.S., the church must stop firing married LGBT people from their positions in Catholic institutions. Former Jesuit seminarian Ben Brunkert has described Jesuits frequenting gay bars, such as the Splash Bar in New York, Jesuits who have left the order as a couple, and Jesuits with memberships to homosexual online dating sites. Jesuit Damien Torres Botello announced in 2015 he's gay and added, quote, We know that so many priests and members of religious communities are gay, close quote. And Jesuits are at the forefront of a vain attempt to modify immutable church teaching on the purpose of human sexuality and the virtue of chastity. Controversial Jesuit James Martin works hard to push a pro-LGBT agenda under the guise of ministry, causing some to wonder why he doesn't focus on chastity. I do talk about chastity in almost every lecture. One reason I don't focus on it, though, is because every LGBT Catholic I've ever met already knows church teaching on celibacy and chastity when it comes to homosexuality. There are also many other individuals and groups in the church who focus on that. I'm simply focusing on other topics. Martin and many of his fellow Jesuits insist they are not contradicting church teaching. But in October, Martin questioned the inerrancy of the Bible in support of his pro-LGBT preoccupation, suggesting the Bible could be wrong about homosexuality. Quote, the issue is precisely whether the biblical judgment is correct, end quote. Martin's dabbling in heresy caused Bishop Joseph Strickland to correct the Jesuit on social media, saying, quote, I know you have lots of support, but you are challenging the deposit of faith that I promised to defend. As a bishop, I'll keep defending it, end quote. William Mahoney, Church Militant, Detroit. Well, the Jesuits, uh, a once mighty order, have fallen to a certain degree, and it began with all kinds of saints. I mean, you had the founder, Saint Ignatius Loyola, the 16th century, founded this counter-reformational movement, the Jesuits, to clarify church teaching and to, uh, you know, to clarify all errors that were out there, and there were many at the time. Uh, known for his spiritual exercises, if anybody's done a cursio, they know what that's all about. The North American martyrs, 17th century, uh, eight martyrs uh, killed for the faith, or spread, trying to spread the faith to the, to the Native Americans in Canada and um, upper state New York. You had St. Francis Xavier, who went to India, and that's why there's so many 
Indian Catholics today, and he went all the way to, uh, to Japan and the, and the Far East. You had uh, Sir Edmund, um, Sir Edmund Campion, who was, uh, went to England, and he was um, eventually martyred there under the queenship of uh, Elizabeth. He was hanged. And St. Aloysius Gonzaga, 23-year-old seminarian who was known for his preaching of chastity. All of these great saints, they came out of the Jesuit order. And today, uh, so much has fallen within the order into uh, debauch uh, debauchery. And um, the confusion that continues that feeds this kind of thing in the Jesuits, just the ambiguity, uh, ambiguity continues. I'll give you an example, a kind of a well-known um, article that came out uh, in uh, the Daily Beast in 2015, uh, Confessions of a Gay Jesuit, How I Was Forced to Leave My Church and My Calling. It was about a gay, uh, homosexual seminarian. I just wanna, just wanna mention four quotes here because this just underscores, I think, the the utter confusion that there still is with regard to homosexual and, and, and sexuality in general that is fostered by the Jesuits and, and perhaps the quote unquote spirit of Vatican II. And that is, here's one quote, my friend Katie, and this is the man speaking, my friend Katie asked me how I could dedicate my life to an institution that labels me as intrinsically disordered. Now, the church does not label people intrinsically disordered. They label or they speak about actions that are intrinsically disordered. Our nature, according to natural law, we are ordered, properly ordered, to union and procreation in the sacrament of marriage. Now, people may have disordered feelings, or you may call them orientations, and the actions are certainly intrinsically disordered because they contradict human nature itself. That's all the church is teaching. Another quote, gay people like myself, dot, dot, dot. Again, he is labeling himself. This is the genius of the left. The genius of the left was to take, take the labels off of, or the adjectives, really, off of the actions and the feelings and put them on the persons. So now you're a class, you're a discriminatory class. You cannot discriminate just like against black people or against uh, other minorities. You cannot discriminate against quote, unquote, gay people because now that's their label. It's their identity. It's their personhood. All false, all erroneous. And lastly, I just want to mention, uh, uh, I knew Catholicism was anti-gay. Now, what the heck does that mean? Catholicism is not anti-gay with regard to people who may have same-sex attraction. We all have disordered feelings and desires and attractions, no matter what they are. It's, it's a part of you know, being a post-Eden original sin human being. Uh, but the church, of course, just speaks about clearly, at least in her catechism and in her magisterium, that certain actions and certain, um, certain um, uh, propensities toward them are disordered vis-a-vis -vis original sin or other things that may have come in our life. So I just wanted to clarify that um, with regard to all the errors that's out there. It's just terrible. Yeah, yeah really good points. Yeah. The uh, Jesuits, too, yeah. you know, they go back to 1534, and it's been a teaching order from almost the beginning. Yeah, 14 that's years right. after that, I think it was, uh, what, 1548, they founded the first school in Messina, Sicily. They have 300 schools now in America. What happened was 1967, Land of Lakes, we can talk about it. You can go to our site and look about it. And that's when separate, uh, what are we going to teach at this school is separate. Catholic school is going to be separate from what the church teaches. And that's where things went off the rail. How are we looking today? Not very good. Uh, last year in June, an archbishop, Charles Thompson, God bless him, he stood up for the faith. And he said, Brebeuf, uh, Jesuit prep school, you need to remove your name Catholic. Now, they hired or rehired a, uh, a teacher, who, a gay teacher, who was in the civil union, public, same-sex marriage, you know, not living the faith and scandalizing the kids in, in, to, to boot. Teach the faith, don't undermine it with your actions, basically, is what the code says. Wasn't living it. They, they uh, rehired that person back. And they said, well, you know, this violates our informed conscience. And, you know, we've always been let go in the past to make these decisions ourselves. Well. God bless Charles Thompson, Archbishop, for standing up for the faith there. Yanking the name worked because at another school, local school, under Thompson, he, they, they, they said this Cathedral High School, they were not a Jesuit school, Brothers of the Cross runs the school, and they said, you know what, we're going to go ahead and fire this same-sex teacher because this is what yeah. the Archbishop is ordering us, this is our church teaching, and it all makes and sense. And you're Catholic. And you're Catholic. <laughs> they did that. Okay, yeah. everything's looking good, right? We're all rolling forward. September. The Jesuits appealed, 
Thompson's original statement to against uh, to, to Rome, the Congregation of Education. Headed uh, by Cardinal Joseph Tobin. Oh, Congregation <laughs> of Catholic Education, they're not going to get anywhere there, mm. with Tobin. And they said, you know, we need to just go ahead and temporarily re suspend that restriction altogether. And we'll just sort of leave it temporarily in limbo now. So the person has to be reinstated. You can't have this you know, Catholic name oh. taken away. So even when you get a bishop who wants to do the right thing, like Thompson, he's got a buck Rome roll. Rome undercuts him. Yeah. And that's so demoralizing. Oh, that's Very. Cardinal Tobin. That's Cardinal Tobin. And of course, one of the most prominent Jesuits out there today trying to push the whole homosexualist narrative is, of course, Father James Martin. And especially, you know, his latest attempt to say that I do preach on chastity. You know, I don't challenge church teaching at all. Give me a break. I, I recommend that people please go to our website. There's an FAQ resource page on Father James Martin, and it essentially highlights why he's lying when he claims that he doesn't challenge church teaching. Now, it is true that in the book Building a Bridge, there's no overt challenges to church doctrine. That's not where you look, though. You look at his talks, his speeches, mm. and you will see that he absolutely does. For instance, he's been on multiple shows where he has praised gay marriage. He has said we need to reverence gay marriage and the love That's of amazing. active gay, homose you know, active gays. Um, the analogy would be like someone claiming to be pro-life and say, oh, I don't challenge her teaching on abortion. And yet, going to people who've had abortions, praising them for their abortion, saying we should reverence their decision to have an abortion. Um, He's not pro-life. Give me a break. Totally You're, contradictory. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Total um, hi hypocrite and yeah. fraud. I don't have a problem at all saying he's a liar. He is a liar. And people need to realize that. Another thing, big news today, just found out. Pope Francis apparently rebuked Father Martin privately. Really? Because he was upset at the way that Father Martin publicly portrayed their private meeting before the Amazon Synod in mm, Rome. Good for him. Um, be, apparently, you know, if you all remember, George Neumeyer kind of infiltrated a talk in New York City where Father Martin was gloating about his private meeting with the Pope, saying, oh, he gave me the stamp of approval for my LGBT ministry, all that stuff, making it seem as if the Pope was completely on board with Father Martin's agenda. Now, that may or may not be true, but according to Pope Francis and what he said to various U.S. bishops, he was very unhappy. And uh, James Martin has had a um, talking to, essentially. The Pope privately called him, gave him a talking to, mm. and was very upset about it. Now, again, could this just be Pope Francis being upset at the blowback right. and making it look as if he was not on board? Who knows? But all we, all we know is Martin is staying completely mum on this. Um, and uh, the Pope wasn't happy about it. So. You, know, you get guys like uh, Bishop Barron and say you need to have a, a mandate. My gosh, what about guys like this, this uh, Father James Martin and uh, the, the LA Rec you guys covered yesterday? Where's the mandate? You know, when you're saying, okay, Father James Martin, you say people are born gay. They're born that mm -hmm. way. That's not what the Bible says. That says God made disordered, uh, intrinsic. You know, that's yeah. the, the effect of fallen human nature. And we all right. have to be uh, working out our own salvation <clears throat> in fear and trembling. Even if they're born that way vis-a-vis -vis the, um, the effects of original sin within the womb, that doesn't necessarily mean that you were conceived that way. It's certainly not God's What he's God's saying is God makes you to, this way, yeah. therefore you have to be faithful to how God made you, therefore you have to keep that natural so in other exactly. words, law. Yeah. It's God's positive will, he's, he's saying. Yes, yes, that there away. should be some Correct. homosexuals. Yes, and he yeah, actually... That's, that's yeah, and obviously he, false. He actually says that um, ex-gays uh, do not lead a fully integrated life yeah. because they're not acknowledging who they truly are. Ridiculous. What a slap there, in the there's face. There's the who they are instead of what they feel thing that I've been talking about. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's so you know, foundational the, the, the in this. The point you made about yeah. taking the label of, of, of a proclivity right. or even a sin and putting it on the person. Yes. First of all, that is so demeaning to the person. I Very. mean, all of us have yeah. committed sins that we go to confessional for. If Very. you take one of those particular sins and say, oh, well, that person is that sin for, you know, do you, you name the Do you have the oh, adultery terrible. community? Yeah, exactly. Do you have the uh, <laughs> masturbating community? <laughs> I've never heard of these or, communities. Yeah, but, but you know what? Or the here, bad thought community? Here, or the bad thought a, community. Here's an example, an overt example of Father Martin challenging church teaching. He wanted yeah. the language of the catechism changed from homosexuality as uh, the same-sex attraction as disordered to differently ordered. Right there, you're, you're challenging right church there. teaching that's right huge. there. Exactly. Because you're wanting to give a stamp of approval on the actual And that's not just a small attraction. word. That, yeah. that, that speaks about what homosexuality is. He's saying the Bible got it wrong, the catechism got it wrong, but I'm not challenging any church teaching. No, yeah. no. Okay, we got a problem there. Yeah. Uh, and, and you know, that's really um, amazing. this is what Archbishop Vigano came out and said is the fundamental problem in the church today is the homosexual network strangling the church, yes. the corrupt gay mafia, yeah. his words. 
and yet nobody wants to talk about it. You know, it was so apropos that they used this day a year ago to have the synod on the sexual abuse in the church, that three-day synod, yeah. when they Which had a, a whole nothing. month of Amazon synod. They allowed the bishops so. to investigate themselves. Okay, so you have three days, but they still chose Peter Damien that is interesting. as the feast I, I, day to kick that off. That was actually off. good to, to choose Peter Damien. Yeah, well, well he did What makes me wonder if they yeah. did that on purpose or if it was just a, just a coincidence. I don't know. I don't, know. But I don't think St. Peter Damien would be one of their favorite saints there in Rome. That's <laughs> Maybe I mean, it was this just point. this uh, Freudian slip yeah, thing going on, you know. If you got, if the people out there who don't know about St. Peter Damien, he wrote the Book of Gomorrah yes. because right. he was dealing with the infestation of clerical sodomy in, in, in his the time, yeah. And boy, that had some very strong language about these priests. Even saying, I'm not advocating it here, but I'm just quoting him, he even said that in addition to active gay priests, um, especially those who are seducing young men, yeah. and superiors who sort of turn a blind eye, he said they're worthy of death. Yeah. And then he had specific penalties for these active gay priests that were very severe. You know, and he was pushing on the Pope, too, to act. He had to push on the Pope to act. So, you know, that's, there's a precedent yeah, there. Absolutely. Speaking of documents, I, we would be remiss if we, if we did not speak about the documents that are official Vatican teaching, um, just, just underscored by Pope Benedict the Sixteenth in 2005, that people, men with a homosexual pro, pro, proclivity, should not be ordained to the priesthood. Mm -hmm. And that is being totally ignored. That is where this has to start. Yeah, absolutely. Well... That finishes our discussion on the Jesuits. Hang tight for just a moment. When we come back, our Friday Person of the Week. We'll be right back. Battlefield is about the truth and lies. Because truth at the end of the day is Jesus Christ. As you know, each day we highlight stories to help you know the news, and today is Friday, so it's time for our Person of the Week. Selena Soule is a high school senior in Glastonbury, Connecticut. She's suing to keep so-called transgenders out of girls' sports. And once the gun went off, the two transgender athletes took off flying and left all of us girls in the dust. I knew right then and there that some girls would be missing out on great opportunities to succeed, and that women could be completely eradicated from their own sports. Selena and two other female Connecticut track and field athletes are suing Connecticut's education bureaucracy for allowing transgender athletes to compete against them. They filed their lawsuit last week in federal court, but of course the media is supporting the two men, and Democratic presidential candidate Elizabeth Warren came out Thursday against a proposed bill in Arizona limiting girls' sports to actual girls. This is so unjust. So unfair. I mean, it's so obvious. It's, it's a shame we even have to have a discussion about it. But Christine, you, you were saying about how um, regardless of the hormones they take, regardless of their, whatever they do in order to become quote unquote transgendered, they're still men. They still have that advantage. Yeah, they're, they're, look, there are fundamental biological differences between male and female that cannot ever be changed no matter how right. much you train, no matter how much uh, testosterone suppressing, you know, whatever uh, hormones you take. For instance, there's the difference between the ratio of the, the hip width and your femur, the length of your femur bone right. in men and women, which actually changes the center of gravity in your body, which actually changes how you run, how you compete, how you do all sorts of sports between men and women. Uh, men actually have more what they're called fast twitch muscles in their bodies. Again, none of this can be obtained through more training, and fast twitch mm -hmm. muscles give men the ability to explode off the starting line in sprinting. Um, uh, men generally have larger lungs, which means greater oxygen intake, which means more oxygen gets to your muscles uh, and more hemoglobin in the blood, which means better endurance, you know, better speed, all of these advantages that men have that lead to crushing women in any female sport. So where's just, all the feminists? Exactly. I mean, this That's just highlights question. the hypocrisy of the feminists. They don't care about women's rights because they're not speaking up for these women. Um, just an ex example, a completely ridiculous example. A man named Mary Gregory broke, I mean, he smashed the world record for women in four, four different weightlifting categories mm. in a single day. Because he's a man, for crying out loud, you know? <laughs> women can't compete. You know, and again, the feminists males, don't care. You're, in every single cell in the human body, you're either XX or XY. Exactly. It doesn't matter what else you try to do to camouflage that. Yeah. Don't, don't bring up your science here, Paul. This is, uh, you know. <laughs> I know. That's anathema to the left. I'm sorry. Yeah. All right. We're going to a couple of you of comments right now. So, quote, this is the main reason 
The bishops keep everything secret. They know any scandal automatically results in the decline of donations. They are more like executives and corporations who always protect the brand over the public than they are moral leaders and shepherds." Unquote. And regarding the plummeting donations in the church, another viewer said, I hope this continues until all homosexual clergy are out of the Catholic Church. It is sickening that our donations go to their homosexual good times and orgies. We should no longer foot the bill for the abuse payoffs and their lawyers. Their families need to pay for them. And after they have served in prison terms, they, should get, uh, they need to get a job and get their wages garnished forever. I think that's absolutely true. Well, what there about the one high level orgy, gay, sex, drug, orgy in the Vatican? Yeah. Uh, was it two years ago that took place? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, the thing that's so frustrating and why people are actually not giving money anymore is because these bishops always seem to escape the justice that everybody else has to face. Case in point, Representative David Nangle in Boston was recently um, convicted for embezzling something like uh, misusing about four hundred thousand mm. dollars. Rightly so, you know the the federal government looked into it, found out he misused four hundred thousand dollars of public funds, and now he's going to jail as he should. What about Bishop Bransfield? Oh, this yeah. guy misappropriated four mm. million dollars in diocesan money, and what does he get? A slap on the wrist. He's got to make a public apology. Mm. Um, he gets an early retirement, and he stays on the diocesan payroll. You know, I mean, the guy should be in prison. Well, then you and get this, the, the, the McCarrick thing, too. I mean, what's, the, what's what happened to McCarrick? You know, Vigano says he destroyed the vocations of generations abused, of priests and abused them. He abused and, people. He committed crimes. So, and yet these people and all the justice. money. Yeah. And yeah. what, he gets the retirement, and they just say, well, we don't, we're not responsible for him anymore. Yeah, exactly. This is why people are not giving money anymore. And what's interesting yeah. is just this morning, Damien Thompson, who writes for The Spectator in the UK, very well-known British Catholic, he, he said... Um, that he was talking to someone in Rome, a, a priest, a very well-known priest, he wouldn't say the name, said that that priest was talking to someone in Rome and that Vatican finances have been hit very hard by U.S. contributions, which are in complete and total free fall. It has everything to do with the McCarrick wow. investigation, the sex abuse crisis, and the fact that a lot of Americans don't like the Pope's liberal stance on many things. So. Well, that also so makes it more beholden to the German church, which is running a lot of funds towards the exactly. Vatican. So yeah, so Apparently, they pay the heating bills for all the seminaries. So one priest said we should part, start a... Uh, sweaters for seminarians fund. <laughs> oh, no. Well, I tell you, what a mess, but thanks be to God for Jesus, uh, his promise that uh, the gates of hell will not prevail. That's true. Oh, Keep yeah. up your prayers, stay and Catholic, don't yeah, jump yeah. over ship. Absolutely. There's, yeah. there's no place fight. to go. Yeah. Stay Holy Spirit will fight. continue to lead and guide us as long as we stay and fight. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. All right. That's going to do it for today. Please pray for priests, offer your rosaries, make acts of reparation for them, especially the priests who are publicly opposing their bride, the church. Well, it's good to expose evil acts so that hopefully fewer people will be scandalized and led astray by a false gospel. These priests do need our prayers. They're leading souls to hell along with their own. So please pray for priests. We'll be back again on Monday. Have a great weekend. God bless you.